RGH Realty Number no. One Inc. to my audience exactly what a loan officer does. Yeah, um, a loan officer will basically run your credit and check out your income, your assets, your residence history to ensure that you qualify for a mortgage mm -hmm. and at that point collect the documentation, put a package together to submit to uh, processing and underwriting. Okay. Great, thank you. When you receive a phone call in your office, what's the first step? Um, the very first thing I like to do is to ask the person whether they feel more comfortable discussing this over the phone or in person. Um, and then based on that answer, we either set up an appointment or set up a time to talk on the phone. Uh, if they'd like to do it over the phone and uh, get their residence history, what they do for a living, income. Um, the most important thing is how much they can afford um, comfortably their mortgage payment, down payment, and closing costs. Okay. Do uh, you have problems with people giving you this information? Um, some people are more worried about identity theft and their financial security than others, and most of those people would rather meet in person. So that's, okay. that's not a problem. That's not a problem. To that. Okay, you like that? Yeah, I'd like to know who I'm dealing with, and I think the, you know, the person on the other side feels more comfortable mm -hmm. as well. But over the phone, it's okay as well. Yeah, I mean, some people are busy. You know, mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Okay, and then once you meet with them, what exactly do you do next? Well, um, at that point, we run the credit. Um, I usually will ask them to bring their, their tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements, things like that, um, so I can review those documents to make sure that the information they're giving me is accurate. There's oftentimes discrepancies between what someone uh, earns and what an underwriter is going to uh, assign as an income value on a loan. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to uh, get to the bottom line of that issue early. And then we can start discussing what loan program works best for them mm -hmm. and payment scenarios, things like that. Are people hesitant when you, uh, when they go over their documentations? I mean, do you find resistance with that as well? No, not as much. I think people are very curious because everyone knows right now getting a mortgage is difficult. Mm -hmm. So I think most people find value in my approach. You know, I'm up front. I say I want to find whatever the issues are up front so that we can put together a you know, a good explanation for whatever the underwriter may question so we can have a smooth process. Okay. So when you run credit and you see a few little dings on their credit report, what what do you do at that point? Um, I get the details as to what happened at that point, whether they were out of work, they had a family emergency, medical, uh, you know, out of the country, and put a letter together explaining what happened and why it won't happen again. Okay. And where does this letter go? Um, I put that in the package. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Do you find that helps? Yeah, absolutely. The mm -hmm. underwriters want to know whether they're dealing with a deadbeat or someone who just ran, you know, ran through some hard times. What exactly is the timeline of how everything should work with the client? Okay. Uh, well, once a client finds a house, um, I begin to put a package, the underwriting package together. And that consists of a, a loan application form that summarizes all of the information we've discussed previously, their residence history, income, assets, uh, a lot of the information I get from the realtor on the property itself, the type of home that it is, the address, the purchase price, how much the taxes are, and uh, the application coupled with the income and asset documentation gets submitted to the underwriter. Um, the buyer also will usually at that time go sign the contract, which the attorney will forward to me. Once I receive that, I can order an appraisal. The appraiser meets the realtor. The appraiser completes his uh, report, forwards that to me, and that also goes to the underwriter. And the underwriter reviews all of this information and approves the loan, issues a loan commitment or a loan approval. And there are usually a few conditions. They might want an updated pay stub or a letter to explain something or discrepancy in the file. And once those items are received, then uh, the file is cleared to close and you can schedule the closing. And, and exactly how long does that usually take? An average? It, uh, it depends on each deal, but mm -hmm. um, I've gotten them done as quickly as three weeks. I would say average is about 45 days though. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes on there that requires other people, third parties, the sellers, the title company, the homeowner's insurance company, the attorneys, the attorneys, mm -hmm. the appraisers, mm -hmm. you know, both realtors. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
You know, 45 days is about average. If we're doing a renovation loan, as we discussed, we add another entity to the process, the contractors, so that takes a little longer, maybe 60 days on those. Mm -hmm. And uh, the co-ops and condos, as we discussed, sometimes take a bit longer as well, because now we need the management company to fill out questionnaires. And they need approval, too. Right, they also need approval. So um, it does vary on each deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what about commercial? Um, commercial can take a really long time. Mm -hmm. You know, commercial, like I said before, is the Wild West. Mm -hmm. um, anything can happen. I, I would say plan on three to six months on a commercial deal. Mm -hmm. um, there's an environmental inspection that's usually done that might bring up some issues with the soil. Or, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen on a commercial. Okay. What about the purchase of land? Land financing is, uh, is tricky. I don't do a lot of land financing anymore. Um, the lenders that do do it, they want to know that you're going to build. They oftentimes also want to give you the money to build and have a commitment from you as to how quickly you'll build, what you'll build, what you're going to do with it after it's built. So there's a lot of loopholes to jump through, um, you know, with land financing. But it, and, and it can also take a while. You know, it has to be a, a feasible piece of land. There's a study that's done on it, so you can have road access, access to water, utilities. So. Okay. RGH Realty Number One Inc.